Support for this program is provided by the men and women of the Louisiana Forestry Association. Through sustainable forestry, LFA members promote the health and productivity of Louisiana's forests for generations to come. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Hello and welcome to Louisiana Public Square. I'm Beth Courtney. And I'm Shauna Sanford, co-anchor of Louisiana, the state we're in. I'm filling in for Craig Freeman, who will be returning next month. Do you know how many amendments there are to the U.S. Constitution? How about the year that the Constitution was written? Well, those are just two of the questions asked on the naturalization test taken by immigrants who want to become legal U.S. citizens here in the United States. Citizenship can be jeopardized by earning a grade of 60 or below. I wonder how many of us would pass that. Well, no matter where you stand on the issue of immigration, the truth of the matter is that as long as America is seen as the land of opportunity, individuals will try to immigrate here. While most foreign-born immigrants follow the standard path to becoming legal citizens, there's no ignoring the fact that for many others, the lure is so strong they choose to enter the U.S. illegally. Louisiana has been the destination for immigrants beginning over 300 years ago with the French. Since then, numerous national and ethnic groups have made their mark on our state's history. Most recently, post-hurricane rebuilding activity attracted an influx of workers from Mexico to Louisiana five years ago. Well, prompted by a lackluster economy and safety concerns, some state and national politicians are taking a closer look at the country's immigration policy. In a commercial for Louisiana's U.S. Senate race, illegal immigrants are shown entering the U.S. to much fanfare, like winners on a game show. But what truly awaits people who cross the borders illegally? And if our country's immigration system is broken, what is Louisiana's role in reform? In April, Arizona Governor Jan Brewer signed sweeping immigration enforcement legislation into law. The bill combats violence and crime in her state that she says the federal government has not addressed. With my unwavering signature on this legislation, Arizona strengthens its security within our borders. President Barack Obama says the legislation is misguided and creates many new problems. It interferes with federal immigration enforcement. It makes it more difficult for law, local law enforcement to do its job. It strains state and local budgets. And if other states follow suit, we'll have an unproductive and unworkable patchwork of laws across the country. Other states have followed suit. Despite a Department of Justice case against the law, 19 states have shown interest or introduced bills similar to Arizona's. The Office of the Louisiana Attorney General has filed a legal brief in support of Arizona due to an important issue relating to state sovereignty. I think the priority right now is protecting the rights and the sovereignty of our state and our citizens that live in it. Representative Joe Harrison is a Republican from Homa. Last session, he unsuccessfully introduced immigration enforcement legislation for the third year in a row. Harrison feels the action was needed to protect the safety of his constituents. The hurricanes brought in a number of people, mostly transients, into our area that have created a whole plethora of problems. Among other things, Harrison's bill would have required verification of citizenship of individuals applying for state and local benefits and criminalize the transport or sheltering of someone here illegally. Harrison plans on introducing an even stronger version next session. I'm going to double all penalties for illegals. All penalties will be doubled. Now, that's whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony. If they're not in this country, it is a cost factor that the taxpayers of the state are paying. It can be very difficult if you are of low economic background or low educational background to come to the United States legally. Kathleen Gasparian is an immigration attorney with David Ware and Associates. She says due to the complexities of U.S. immigration policy, the wait time for visas can be as long as 20 years. I think it's this myth of immigration that 
all you have to do is show up at the airport and knock on the door and they can let you in legally. It's actually very difficult. Gasparian is concerned that states enforcing immigration policy are overstepping their authority. Immigration is a federal law. The law is written by Congress and is supposed to be enforced by the executive branch, in this case the Department of Homeland Security. Louisiana's only current immigration law makes it a felony to operate a vehicle without lawful presence. Gasparian says statutes requiring police to assess someone's immigration status can encourage racial profiling. How do you determine from the side of the road that that driver is one who may not have permission to be here, that's not, that, that may be undocumented? How can you do that just from looking at a driver or just from looking at a car? The Louisiana law is currently being contested. So how bad is illegal immigration in Louisiana? According to the Pew Hispanic Center, there are an estimated 65,000 unauthorized immigrants in the state, or 1.5 percent of the population. This compares to an estimated 11.1 .1 million in the country, or nearly 4 percent of the population. What's happened, interestingly enough, and this is mostly due to the recession that not only the U.S. is in, but the rest of the world, uh, fewer immigrants are coming across the border surreptitiously. Audrey Singer is a demographer with the D.C.-based Brookings Institution. Singer says despite an 8 percent reduction in illegal immigration over the last three years, much attention is being given to those immigrants already here. When the U.S. economy is going strong, immigration tends to increase, whether it's legal or illegal. And um, when the economy goes down, we tend to have backlashes and conflict with uh, immigration. Much of that backlash is centered on the impact of immigrants on crime and jobs. But an analysis by the Brookings Institution says immigrants are institutionalized at substantially lower rates than U.S.-born citizens. And 65 percent of the respondents to a 2006 Pew Research poll reported that the jobs immigrants are taking are ones Americans don't want. Well, without migrant workers, we couldn't get our crops harvested. We couldn't get our crops picked and uh, um, planted in the ground. Elizabeth Liuza is the office administrator of Liuza Produce Farms in Independence. She employs migrant workers legally through the federal government's H-2A program, but only after advertising for locals in a four-state area. She says the ads yield very few results. Basically, that's just the way it goes. I mean, we can't get enough local people around here to stay and, and help us get our crops harvested. Visas were granted for 5,000 temporary agricultural workers in Louisiana in 2009, more than double the amount for Mississippi. Because of the high demand, it's estimated that 50 to 90 percent of Louisiana's agricultural workers are undocumented. Harrison says the solution is to address the shortage of labor. We should have an ample number of people in the United States that are willing to work, whether it's, uh, you know, lack of education, whatever. Let's Let's cure that problem, and it'll cure all the other social problems that we have. All immigrants, typically, 90 percent of them are law-abiding people, with the exception of those that came without paperwork. But they come to do one thing. They come to work and raise a family. Lucas Diaz is the executive director of Puentes New Orleans, an organization that assists Latinos with economic and social development. He estimates that 50 percent of the Hispanics who came to rebuild the city following Katrina have left. Whatever role Louisiana plays in immigration reform, Diaz says, the discussion should focus less on how immigrants enter the country and more on how to allow them to legally contribute to society. The question about immigration isn't so much how do we deal with these folks that don't have proper documentation, but how we have a, a system that incorporates these people that want to come here and we recognize that we need them. We need them for our labor force, we need them for our economy, we need growth. So how do we have a more comprehensive system that recognizes that rather than penalizing folks uh, because our system as it exists isn't uh, fair enough to allow these kind of folks to come in. 
Well, joining me to explore the many, many questions about immigration reform are our audience members. They include Baton Rouge area residents who were randomly recruited and surveyed for us by LSU's Public Policy Research Lab. We also have students from Louisiana State University and two members of the Legislative Youth Advisory Council from Opelousas and Marrero. Now, taking a look at some of the survey questions, when asked if illegal immigration has an impact on crime, of those who responded, a total of 53% agreed, a total of 30% disagreed, and 17% were neutral. We also asked whether illegal immigrants take jobs away from Americans. A total of 64% agreed, 29% disagreed, and 5% were neutral. Arizona has one of the toughest immigration laws in the country. When we asked if Louisiana should pass similar le legislation, 70% said yes, while 24% said no. So let's start there with our studio audience. Welcome all of you. It's a pleasure to have you all here tonight. We're looking forward to a great, great discussion. I know this is a topic of great interest to so many people out there. So let's start with this law, a very controversial law in Arizona, one of the toughest in the country. How many of you feel that Louisiana should adopt similar legislation? Regina, what do you think about it? We lived in Arizona. Okay. And as a result of living in Arizona, I find that the racial profiling issue would be an issue for me. And I say that because I actually had an incident with the police department there where a member of the police department, chief of police at the time I was living in, nephew, attempted to drown my two-year-old son due to the fact that he was of mixed race descent. Mm -hmm. um, having gone through that experience, living there and also seeing mm -hmm. and working with Mexicans who live in the community, I would say it's not a good state to have police officers be the primary people to pull people over and make these types of decisions. Mm -hmm. I think it will cause problems. I think it will cause more tension. Um, and I'm really concerned about it. And, so and I don't think we should pass a law like that here. So you're not in favor of passing a similar uh, legislation here in Louisiana, but having lived there and have, uh, having experienced all of the things that uh, go with the immigration situation there in Arizona, do you believe that something has to be done? I mean, how, how I serious do. of a problem do you see it? I do, but I would say that, like here, a lot of the immigrants who are working in Arizona are taking the jobs that no one else wants. You see them doing house caring, yard work, child care. Um, you see them in positions that Americans don't want. They work in the hotels in the lowest level jobs. Um, and so I don't really see where there's a conflict, though I do see a cycle whenever we have a recession, whenever we have a depression, we tend to scapegoat. And, and we heard and that from, from yes. someone. And in, I in think that process. a lot of what we're seeing now with this becoming a major issue is scapegoating. So key word, though, that your name? Regina, Regina didn't possibly mention, especially in the strawberry uh, comment, mm -hmm. was everything was legal. They hired legal immigrants. They went through the legal system mm -hmm. to get the employment. Mm -hmm. Now, I have absolutely no problem with the legal system as long as the employees are documented. They go through the legal system to maintain order of the system. If you don't maintain order, then there's chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the key issue that I have. I have no problem with legal immigrants, but they are, the name itself of illegal immigrants should cause a concern to everybody. Well, I think you may, you raise an excellent, excellent point there <clears throat> because this law was signed, or the governor signed this uh, legislation into law just a few months ago. And she said the main reason was because of uh, drug trafficking, because of border crossings, because of kidnapping. They have a serious, serious problem there with illegal immigrants. Dennis, I saw you raise your hand. What would you like to say? Uh, I'm just saying I, I disagree. I think that even if we call them illegal immigrants, what makes them legal? I think that immigration law is it's largely arbitrary. We don't we don't base this law on any sort of moral guidance or any sort of real reasoning. It's it's illegal because we make it illegal. And I think that we need more comprehensive immigration reform that allows these people to come here and work because they're looking for what all our immigrants are looking for, gainful employment. And I want to mention that Dennis, you are part of our legislative youth advisory council, so it's really, really great to all have of you us here. here today and now signed in and went through the procedures so that we could orderly sit in which groups. All of that was necessary, and it only works if we sign in, we come ahead of time. But well, I thought you snuck done. in. I thought you. Snuck <laughs> <in>. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give it a go. Yeah, no, that's yeah, right. You admitted <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> but Julie, let's get your comment. Yes. Well, I know quite a bit about the law SB 1070. I've been following it 
for quite a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, there is nothing in that bill that has anything to do with racial profiling. That was brought up by the Hispanics because they wanted to cause confusion with that law. Mm -hmm. uh, it absolutely mirrors the federal law, and that was planned and processed for that reason, so that there would not be any problem in following the Arizona law because it absolutely follows, it mirrors exactly the federal law. And to say that it doesn't causes confusion, and this is what the, um, a lot of people want to cause. We have a government and administration right now that refuses to abide by our own federal laws. They will not protect the citizens. Ms. Brewer had to do that. Very interesting yes. comments, and I see a lot of people want to comment on what you have said here, but I've, I've got to let, uh, is it uh, Harley. Harley? Harley, yes, Harley. You know, the last time in history that we started talking about, you know, order and chaos, uh, that's why Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini came to power, because we forgot about freedom and we talked about order and chaos. I know there are a lot of laws on the books that are supposedly, I'm, I, I, I know that I know many African Americans who've walked into stores in this town and been followed around, although that's definitely illegal and there's no law on the books. Uh, I think that basically the governor of uh, Arizona took the easy way out. It's much easier to say, okay, let's get rid of all the Mexicans instead of let's get rid of all the drug dealers. I think, I think it's a racist based law. I find it offensive and I hope nothing like that ever passes in Louisiana. And furthermore, on the Statue of Liberty, it says, give me your poor, your tired, your huddled masses yearning to be free. And I think we've forgotten that. A whole lot of us have forgotten that, and I'm disgusted by you it. You aren't free if you stink in this country. Okay. Joseph, That's if right. you could hold on just one second. Adele, I know you had your hand yes. up. Yes. Yes. Uh, while I uh, have no uh, uh, doubt that the Arizona law has uh, safeguards, so to speak, against uh, racial profiling. History has taught us that even though the law may state that you may not do this or that, law enforcement, and while I suspect I, I, that probably the majority of law enforcement officers would adhere to the safeguards, history will show you that that is not followed by all. Mm -hmm. I mean, there That's are many that, that, yes, yes but you... Where you go. I suspect that the law will cause an increase in racial profiling. That it, it, it gives those that have the tendency, the law enforcement uh, officers that have a tendency to take the easy way or to um, go toward their, their, their less uh, generous nature and, and uh, racial profile. Let's, so get, let's uh, hold on. I want to get as many of you in here as, as possible. A lot, a lot of really good comments. Al, I know you want to say something. Well, even though some of the things <coughs> that were said are true, and we all have compassion for people, and as he, one of the gentlemen was telling me earlier, that uh, you can't send you know these babies back and people come here because they have nothing to eat and so on, etc. But we always have to come back to the basics. And the most important and fundamental thing is these are laws. Mm -hmm. And this country was built on laws. And we all as citizens have to live by the law. Now these other issues, like I said, can all be true. But they come second, third, fourth, and so on and so forth. But the first step, they must come here legally. Uh, Carlos, yes. My thing is, I think it's, it's misguided on both sides as a political football. I believe the Arizona law, I'm Hispanic, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, the Arizona law mirrors the federal law exactly to the mm -hmm. point, and it specifically says the, the cops are not allowed to racial profile. If they do, they would, there are steps that would, I hear them against doing that. My thing is, the, if it makes sense for the local uh, law enforcement to help out the federal government. The federal government is not enforcing the law because they want to uh, please the Hispanics and they don't want to uh, lose that voting block kind of. Very interesting. Yes, Gloria. Yes, I do believe that, uh, you know, understanding everyone's point of view, 
that charity begins at home mm -hmm. and then is shared abroad. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to first take care of here mm -hmm. before we can infest this nation with populizing more and more of other people who are underprivileged while we have so many that are here that are underprivileged. Yeah. You know, something that's uh, very interesting, Laura, and I'll, I'll let you jump in here too, uh, you know, think back to Hurricane Katrina, what happened after Hurricane Katrina. Um, so many undocumented workers were part of the rebuilding effort, so that's something to consider here, and I'd love to get your opinions on that and hear what you, how you feel about that and, 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 and how they have impacted Louisiana negatively and positively. But, Laura, I, I want to get your comment. Um, well, talking about Hurricane Katrina, mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's two sides to this story. Yes, some of them come in because they want to better their life, better for their families, and they try to do it legally. And like we heard earlier, it, sometimes it takes years to become a citizen and try to do it legally. But we call them illegal. Now, if you or I did anything illegal, we're going to pay the price for it. Mm -hmm. So we either need to change it and not call them illegal or do something about it, make it either easier or harder, whatever it's going to take. But we, we as tax-paying citizens can only take the burden for so long for all of the free things that we give. Well, what do you say? That, I mean, we have laws on the books. Those laws are not being enforced. Yes. Enforced. Let me, let me, let me get here from someone who hasn't had a chance to speak yet. Just after Katrina, a company called Kellogg, Brown, and Root, mm -hmm. a subsidiary of Halliburton, mm -hmm. contracted with the federal government to come in and help with the recovery and cleanup. They brought in untold numbers of undocumented, if we want to call it that, I don't care what we call it, undocumented workers. They were forced to live in basic FEMA trailers, tend to a trailer, and each person had to pay $70 per week to stay in those trailers and get the work. They were uh, <clears throat> harassed. They were told if, uh, if you say anything about not getting minimum wage or about us paying you cash, we'll, we'll deport you. That'll be it. And I'm going to have to let that be the last word. I'll let you. We'll get to what you're, you're saying. And, Alfred, I definitely want to hear your point. We have to take a quick break. So everybody just sit tight. This is going incredibly well. Lots of very, very good comments. When we return, we'll be joined by a panel of experts who have some very strong opinions about this subject as well. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Louisiana Public Square. We're discussing immigration reform in Louisiana. We've had just an amazing conversation thus far, and it continues right now. Joining us now is our panel of experts. Attorney Kathleen Gasparian specializes in immigration and naturalization law. She's a member of the American Immigration Lawyers Association and has authored several articles on various aspects of immigration law. State uh, Senator Neil Reiser is a Republican from Columbia. He chairs the Senate Labor and Industrial Industrial Relations Committee. Last session, Senator Reiser introduced an amendment that was later withdrawn that would have required contractors to verify employee citizenship status. And Dr. Susan Weischer is the migration specialist with the Jesuit Social Research Institute at Loyola University. Dr. Weischer formerly served 14 years as Director of Immigration and Refugee Services with Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of New Orleans. It is a pleasure to have you all here. Pleasure and I know you've had an opportunity to hear our discussion from earlier. Lively, lively discussion. Yes. Lots of very important um, concern um, about this topic. And uh, uh, Kathleen, I'd like to start with you because yes, these are these are issues I know that you're very, very uh, familiar with. Definitely. Immigration, immigration a reform in Louisiana. Where do we stand? How uh, much of a problem is uh, illegal immigration here in Louisiana? Well, uh, Definitely, we are not dealing with the numbers of undocumented individuals like Arizona is or other states. We actually have a very small um, undocumented population, a very small um, foreign population. Our Latino, uh, Latinos make up about 3% of Louisiana. 
Um, I think we have about 135,000 immig- uh, foreign born here in Louisiana, about which 40% are naturalized citizen. So we're talking about a very small number compared to the rest of the country and definitely compared to national demographic. But still a problem that needs to be dealt with, correct? Well, I think when you have an issue of people who do not have documentation, who don't, who can't get, because of their lack of documented status in the United States, can't get driver's licenses, maybe don't have full access to police services or health care, I think that creates a problem. And I think as everybody was talking <laughs> earlier, I think people feel very passionate mm-hmm. about um, the issue of having people in the United States who either didn't come legally or have somehow violated their status. Senator Reiser, I'd like to get your take on, on the discussion that we've had this uh, morning. The discussion earlier, I listened to a lot of it, and on the, on the state side, immigration law will start with is a federal law. Now, there are issues on the state side that we can deal with, and during the break we had a discussion what can be done on the state level, and as mentioned, I did have a bill that was uh, required E-Verify, mm-hmm. which was a Homeland Security, and and it goes through and it just show that you have to have an employer to go through and have sign an affidavit saying they've checked that on a background check before they before they employ someone. But it was withdrawn. No, it, it went. It made it out of the Senate, passed okay. in the Senate, and it failed in the House. It failed in the House. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Weischer, your take on this discussion? Yes, I, I think all sides of the immigration debate realize that our country's immigration system is badly broken and needs to be fixed. But this can only happen at the federal level, right? Because immigration by our Constitution must be the purview of the federal government. But so what does the federal government need to do? We need to have Congress pass comprehensive immigration reform that would create a legal way for workers to enter the country at the levels that our economy demands. A way for the people, the 11 million people in our country living in the shadows of undocumented people to become, to earn legalization and also enhanced uh, enforcement both at the border and at the work site. All major religious groups in the country have endorsed this idea of comprehensive immigration reform because the system we have now is undermining the common good and the rights and dignities of people. Okay, let's get uh, some input from our audience members because they are, are ready to go. And Albert, I said that we would start with you, so well, if you would please. I think she'll, she's absolutely correct that immigration, the regulation of immigration has to be by federal law. I think the U.S. Constitution clearly provides that, and the U.S. Supreme Court has said that over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. There are things that are subject to state regulation. And uh, Senator Riser, uh, I'm sorry, Representative Riser's bill. Senator Riser. Senator, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, is, is probably one of those areas that, uh, as a labor issue, that can be regulated by state law. But it is a federal problem, and there is a bill in the Senate currently proposed by Senator Menendez of New Jersey, which is the beginning of a process toward comprehensive immigration reform. There are senators, Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, Charles Schumer of New York, that are very interested in comprehensive immigration reform. Mm -hmm. I know that President Obama is very interested in that. So hopefully this is the beginning of a federal process. But what can Louisiana do with relation to immigration? Very little. They can kind of regulate around the edges, but I don't think they can do anything substantive about the issue of immigration itself. So your feeling about the Arizona law, misguided, appropriate? It's unconstitutional. It's unconstitutional. Okay. Yes, James. Uh, yes, President Obama's daughter asked him uh, after the BP leak, Daddy, when are they going to plug the leak? Mm-hmm. Uh, someone needs to ask him, when are we going to plug the borders? Because everybody <clears throat> knows that a sinking ship, the first thing you do is you plug the leak before you do anything else. And that has to take place before any of this comprehensive uh, reform is passed, before anything is done, we have to stop the influx on our borders. I'd like to get a response from our panelists. Well, I think the border issue is something that everybody's been addressing, especially since 9-11. And we've seen such a huge increase in the federal funding of the Department of Homeland Security Um, Historically, what was INS was incredibly underfunded. 
and there has been a huge amount of money uh, put into DHS and in fact there was just um, a, an increase of 20,000 Border Patrol agents over the last I think two years so there's a lot of people there and there's of course the enforcement along the border but I don't think it's realistic to uh, if, unless you're going to put somebody every five feet that you may be able to um, stop people crossing one of the longest borders in the world but I think the way you solve people coming without permission coming without documents is to create a law that is responsive to the economic need of US employers for foreign workers one of the things you guys saw in the first information that you were talking about is like the strawberry farmers bringing in people legally. Well, the H-2A program is great if you are in agriculture, and but there's not any similar programs for other types of basically jobs that don't require bachelor's degree or what we call skilled or maybe unskilled labor. There's nothing in the law that allows an employer to bring permanently or for a year-round position even foreign workers into the United States. There isn't a visa program. so. It's very difficult for an employer who needs maybe people to work in a manufacturing plant or um, something that is a year-round need to bring in workers for jobs that they can't find American workers to fill. Many of our immigration programs, whether it's the H-2A agricultural program or our routes for permanent residents, require the employer to conduct advertising for the job try and find American workers and they can't. You know, but he makes he makes a very, very good point about uh, sealing the border because after all, isn't this, doesn't this get to the heart of what's really happening in Arizona, the influx because the borders have been um, not completely sealed, but uh, when you look at California and you look at other states, they're not able to get in there. And so now that's created sort of this funnel through Arizona. And so here we have the situation that we have. So that's a, that's a well, very, very real, it, it, uh, it's, issue. it's draw it's border enforcement is definitely part of the Menendez bill and uh, first of all immig the the number of undocumented people in the country has dropped because of the recession mm -hmm. because there aren't the jobs people come to this country th there's been this influx because of the jobs and it's at the border it's almost like we have two signs no trespassing help wanted okay People would only come because there's jobs where people are hiring them, and they're responding to the economic needs of our country. We needed those jobs filled, and they were willing, and, 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 and economists have shown time and time again that uh, immigrants tend to be taking the jobs that Americans don't want, which leads actually to higher wages and a better standard of living for Americans. And, and, and get to, that brings in your, your oh, bill, your, your uh, legislation. State legislative yes. part. I, I just want to say for the record, as Louisiana State Senator, I'm, I'm against illegal immigration, point blank. I mean, no ands, ifs, and buts. And the, the question arises, yes, that someone does have to employ these individuals. Mm -hmm. And my legislation did work towards mm -hmm. that. And we use the number 60,000, but I'm not for certain where that number, if it's accurate or not. And what, what is the cost that it have upon us is when these employers don't pay in any kind of employment tax, they, uh, someone that's not documented or illegal, however you want to pr present it, they're entitled to pre-K through 12 education, um, emergency room medical care, mm -hmm. and also to workers' comp if the employer has workers' comp. So that's all, all, all that adds up. And th in a time of crisis like we have now, we're talking about an economic downturn. You really see it now because... That's monies that we could be collecting for higher education and health care for the residents of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Al Allie, I'd like to get your question. Allie is with our Legislative mm -hmm. Youth Advisory Council. Yes. Uh, yes, Senator. Mm -hmm. My worry is that I think a company was mentioned earlier that after Hurricane Katrina made a deal with the government to bring in mm -hmm. undocumented workers and actually suspended the minimum wage for these people. Mm -hmm. Now, my worry is that that, and everybody looked the other way just because they were working to rebuild New Orleans. Now, that doesn't seem to suggest a very firm position on immigration, does it? That when they're working to rebuild our city, we're just fine with it, but when we're in a recession and people need jobs, who do we point at? Well, I, I believe I can address that very accurately with the mm -hmm. legislation I did present. It, it was restricted to the very fact if you did a, had a contract with the state of Louisiana, I didn't encompass it out into the private sector. If you had a contract with the state of Louisiana, you had to use the E-Verify system to do that. And that whole purpose was, in my opinion, from a state legislator, 
spending your tax dollars that they were spent on uh, people that were from, from Louisiana or, or U.S. residents. Explain for us the E-Verify system. E-Verify is a system that is by Homeland Security and Social Security, Homeland and Social Security that goes and shows whether or not you're a legal, that you're a legal worker and legal resident in the, in the United States of America. Now there's been question in my here debate whether or not on its accuracy. It's 99 percent accurate. Now you hear different statistics that say that, but the last report that came out in approximately, I think it was in two, it's been this year, that shows a seven-tenths error margin. But the only trouble with E-Verify, if that's an approach we're going to take, is it's an enforcement only approach. And, and not only does it have a lot of inaccuracies, but it'll just drive people more into the underground economy. We've got to have comprehensive immigration reform that, uh, that brings people out of the shadows, provides a path to earned legalization at the same time that we talk about tightening up workforce uh, enforcement, the borders, so that we don't have this crisis all over again. It, 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 they, it's got to happen at the same time. I think this is an important point, especially in, in the context of your E-Verify bill, which is since 1986 we've had on our laws um, basically a way for that it requires every employer to verify that a person has authorization to work in the United States, and that's the I-9 system. Every employer is supposed to do it. Many employers don't know that they're supposed to do it, but every employer is supposed to do it. There's some very few exceptions to who doesn't get I-9. E-Verify is a computer system that uses the I-9 forms and it basically sends the information on the I-9 off to DHS to have them verify the information is true or not. It's required if you're a federal contractor to participate in E-Verify and a lot of companies do, especially if they are in maybe a large employer in an area that is known to have issues with hiring undocumented workers like poultry uh, processing plants and things like that. So th the issues of E-Verify, the issues of having an employer verify documents are not new. Those have been on the law for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is, is historically, as they got enforced, um, people weren't very happy about it. And historically, there wasn't an agency that was also well-funded enough to go to enforce the I-9 rules against all the employers, but we've seen a great increase over the last two years, especially in DHS going after, requesting employers to produce I-9s and doing what we call an I-9 audit. And so th it, the atmosphere is changing. And it's not just a current issue. Like I said, it's, it's been under many administrations that we've seen this issue. And Gloria, um, ho hold on just one second, Gloria, I know you wanted to jump in there. Yes. Uh, my question is, I understand the situation with the E-Verify, mm -hmm. that it's not, in other words, always updated correctly at the right time or mm -hmm. what have you. I also understand the situation about the I-9, but my question is, where do we draw the line? Where is it that these companies are penalized for hiring illegals that they know are illegal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah, working them right. because of the fact that they can pay them less than minimum wage, which knocks our low-skilled, unemployed youth out of employment Excellent. and sends them directly into crime. Good question. And that's what I addressed. That's my intent to address to, to get the fence. We already have a bill on the state a law on the, that makes it illegal to hire anybody that's an immigrant that we already have on the state law on the books. But, uh, but the penalty on it is, is very minimal. It's a civil penalty and it's not enforceable and I think that's something I've talked to the Workforce Commission with and we're going to continue to. I can speak from the Labor Committee that we're going to continue yeah, right. to address this and the issue that, yeah, yeah, that that's someone, that's where it I, I think that everyone, I mean, they come here to make a living I and mean, that's, that's, that's the American dream. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think I'd feel the same way about what's not here. Julie. Uh, I'd like to ask Senator uh, Reiser a question. Yes, you know, you had requested that uh, the E-Verify be used. Well, I know of a situation uh, where uh, he is an American citizen mm -hmm. that E-Verify was used to verify his background and mm -hmm. because he was going to drive a truck with hazardous materials. Mm -hmm. uh, he tried driving with Loomis or another company mm -hmm. like Loomis and he had to be verified. E-Verify uh, e came back and said that he had numerous aliases, 
-hmm. that he um, had lived all over the country, that he had assault things mm -hmm. against him, and those are not true. I know this boy. Yeah. As I stated when I first started, it's seven-tenths percent now. That's what the error margin is. And a lot of the cases you're talking about, the ones that have been, it's been like identity theft. Now, mm -hmm. is it foolproof? No, but we have other books, other laws on the books that's crimes that people have come back like and been DNA and been resolved from it. So just because, does that mean that we don't enforce the law? Is it, is it the, it's the best way that I know to address it at the time? Well, he has but, paperwork to prove it and yes, also the a, sheriff's office has given him a clean bill. And there's an appellate level in this. I mean, so if you come back, I mean, personally, I'd like to know. I mean, if my, my identity had been stolen like that, if someone was using it and wrong, I would be glad that we ran the E-Verify on it and then I was able to address it. But, 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 but again, the, the trouble with the E-Verify is not only that is it highly inaccurate, again, it's an enforcement only approach. So people will simply go into the underground economy and will lose all that revenue that we would have been getting had they been on the payroll. And this has happened in well, other states that they've tried the to enforce he's it. Going by the law. And again, it is, a f it is federal legislation that E-Verify can, cannot be, you know, mandated. Now, you talked about the Menendez bill. Now, the, the, these are bills at the national level that we should be engaging in, again, because these, this is where immigration reform has to happen. The Menendez bill talks about a tamper-proof Social Security card, okay, with biometric data. Are, are y'all willing, you know, to do that? Are you mm -hmm. willing to have these, the, this complete change in, 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 in documents that would be required for employment? And, and, and they talk about the latest technology for this, um, I think building on the mistakes of E-Verify. But again, part of comprehensive immigration reform that creates, uh, a, a, again, earned legalization for the folks that have been living here and, and, and living in the shadows, by the way, most of whom have been here for more than 10 years. We want to replace illegality with legality. We're talking about folks that have married here, have. U.S. citizen children are involved in their communities and their churches. It's time to bring these folks out of the shadows through comprehensive immigration reform and fix the system so we don't have these problems again. Regina, yes. Um, I have a question for the Senator. Um, we were talking earlier about uh, benefits and that this is also a federal problem. But in the last few years, 44 states have actually passed 314 pieces of legislation mm -hmm. concerning immigration. So it has ha become essentially a state situation. Right. In many of those states, the legislation was indeed focusing on benefits. Uh, a good example is Oregon. When they went to research the cost effectiveness of this, they discovered that after putting a million dollars out there, there was very little um, immigration um, participants in the healthcare system. As she is saying, a lot of them are underground and they are afraid to um, come in for benefits because that is one of the ways they fear that they will be caught. Wouldn't it be more cost effective to take the money that we're putting into those type of programs and into that type of research and apply it to other things that we as U.S. citizens actually need in our states and let the federal government handle this issue? Well, I, I guess you go back to the question, who should be employed, someone that's illegal or not illegal? I feel like we should have every measure to have someone that's a resident or re citizen of the United States to be employed and be paying those taxes into the system to, well, to satisfy and such and needs. If the people who hire them mm -hmm. right. have more Absolutely. laws against them, right. Right. and that's penalties. my legislation addresses that, yeah. addresses the at, at the source. It goes back to the source on that. Byron, I'd like to get you in on this discussion. I know you've been wanting yeah, to jump uh, in. I, I'm originally from St. Mary Parish. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, uh, an article appeared in the local news about uh, several residents who had been arrested and were involved in drugs coming over from Texas. Uh, some of the Texas law enforcement agencies were involved in busting these individuals. And it, I just have to think that, that somehow illegal aliens are being used as cover to bring in these illegal drugs and you know, harm, harm my friends, my family, uh, our children. And, and it's confusing the issue because it, it's, it's difficult when you see these people, uh, you want to help them, but they're also being used as tools by some of these really horrible people that are doing awful things. They're they murdering Mexican police by the dozen. And, it, and it's, I think it's really bad to, to, 
to let to let stuff like that go. I, I think it's important that we don't conflate the war on drugs, which has been, uh, you know, which we've been losing for the past 30 years, with immigration issues. Okay, it, it, it's it. Yeah, right, right, but, but, but again, is you can't but separate if, the two because no, they are if, so if, integrated if, if together. So, if somebody, if you know, anyone that's for comprehensive immigration reform would also say that if you come to this country and you break the laws, you go home. You you cannot come. Okay. And if we had a system where we could bring people forward, bring them out of the shadows, and through a, a legalization process, find out who they are, what have you, then we'll know who we're dealing with. But if you uh, continue this this double society, where you have people living in the shadows, that's that's you can't have that in a democracy. It it, it doesn't make sense. Kathleen, I'd like to get you to jump in on this because you deal with this day in and day out. I do. Yes, that's what I do. <laughs> yes. I keep people from getting yes. deported. And uh, you know the, I think um, part of the this discussion is you know everybody will the numbers say that immigrants commit all these crimes and the undocumented commit all these crimes and. Uh, Yes, there are some that do, and there are a lot of citizens that do as well. And there but is much lower rates than the they yes. born. <laughs> and I think that I do think that there our immigration system is broken and needs fixing. And I do have a problem with people coming to the United States without authorization. But I believe that we solve the problem in a myriad of ways, and that. We, federal law, we don't have policemen who are federal. They're all state or local police. So if they're not allowed to racially profile and question if you're allowed to be here, and if you keep making it a federal thing, then what happens? We just continue touching up on our Spanish or what? No, <laughs> police can, no the police in this country absolutely well, I can wanna... question anybody they, they believe has committed a crime. Absolutely. Sure. The problem with the Arizona law is that it said that for any lawful stop, they had to question anyone they were suspicious could be here illegally that's a problem with that law how do you how do you do, see now that's that's not true there's many people here in legal status that don't speak english okay and 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 how do you define suspicious the law never said the, the law never said that was the problem so you're going to have citizens and people that are legal legally here being constantly questioned and harassed for their papers. And another problem with that is that it distracts law enforcement from investigating and solving serious crimes. And another problem is that it, it undermines the, the, the trust that you need between the immigrant community and law enforcement. We need immigrants to go to the police when there are crimes, and that I, won't happen with laws like I think that. I'd, I'd like to address in, uh, both of these issues, which is immigration law, if you commit a crime, and, and it, there's a lot of crimes that will get you removed from the United States. You get convicted of certain crimes, it'll prevent you from coming to the United States. Part, many of the elements of what we call comprehensive immigration reform, fixing the law, fixing the issue of having so many undocumented people, is to be able to allow the, to have a prosecutorial hierarchy where DHS can go after criminals, can, go, can focus on stopping things like drugs coming across the border, can focus on stopping human trafficking, can focus on have the, removing from the United States those who do have convictions. One of the things DHS is doing is called the Secure Communities Act, which is when an individual is convicted of a crime that the state agencies rep give, send the fingerprints off to DHS, and if they don't have authorization to be here or if that crime is going to affect their ability to remain in the United States, then DHS is notified, or DHS is notified anyway, but DHS is going to come pick them up. And there's movement in the law, and there's movement in agency enforcement to really address these issues. I mean, DHS will be happy to tell you the number of criminals that they have arrested in the past year and removed. It's very clearly a concern for everybody. Okay, let's bring in Mauricio, because I know that you've been wanting to jump uh, in here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was um, anxious to participate a little earlier. Um, I think that we should put a lot of emphasis on, you know, the, I guess the main topic of the conversation, which is the immigration reform. Yes. You know, I feel that there's a lot of uh, politicians that are trying to deviate the problem, trying to criminalize undocumented workers. Um, and I think that there has to be a way to help the workers who are here, who are working for their families, who are here not to commit crimes, but to help the economy, to pick up the, the vegetables, 
to work on landscaping, on construction. You know, these are the people who have raised their families here. We have kids who have been brought by their parents when they are little, who are, who are successful students in their schools, who have assimilated to the country, who know English and their native uh, language, whatever it is. You know, I think that it is time for n the federal government, with the support of the Louisiana government, because I think that it's a, it's a problem that needs to be solved. And um, it's sad to see that this is not moving in the right direction. I just want to get back to the securing the borders. Uh, quite often what I hear is, is that it's an either or. And, and I just want to say it's not an either or. You can have the comprehensive immigration reform and secure the borders to the best of the federal government's ability. Don't speak of it as an either or. It okay. says it's not. I agree. Okay. Yes, Al. Uh, <clears throat> there's exceptions to all rules. Just as he was saying and she was saying, those are minor incidents. Let's look at the scenario, the whole picture. Look what has happened to our country here. Now, first of all, you got half of them going bankrupt, this Los Angeles, uh, California, and different states. People are suffering and so on and so forth. Yet, these people who I have compassion for, my uh, grandfather was from Mexico or whatever. But even if all that's true, the most important thing is we are in an economic crisis, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of that has come about. People come here, and, and the regular Americans don't have jobs anymore. They say they don't want them. Well, it's not a question of not wanting them. It's people coming here, like how many there are, 11, 12 million, whatever, come here, they, they work for half or one-third of the price that Americans work for. We're accustomed to a standard of living. Uh, my old man in, uh, 19, in the 50s, I'm, I'm going to be 77 this month, he used to get $20 an hour as an electrician. Today, a top electrician gets, what, $10 an hour? And this was in the 50s. So you see what is happening to our country. Therefore, these things about, he is so correct. Stop the leak. Then you get to step number two. Get these people doing something. You can't let the federal, the states have got to take some action because it looks like the federal government just wants to sit by and not do anything. And Al, I'm and just, it, I think I'm going to have to let yours be the last one because I've got to get give you all a chance to respond to Al and some of the other things that you've heard. We uh, Believe it or not, we have run out of time here. This is so great. We could go on and on and on. But just in closing, if you could respond to Al. There's been many changes in the labor situation in this country and why are electricians making ten dollars an hour versus twenty has a lot to do with that and the, the loss of the power of the unions and what have you but we've got to understand that 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 it's not an either or with jobs uh, immigrants have, t have tended to take jobs vacated by increasingly educated Americans fifty percent of Americans in the nineteen sixties did not have a high school diploma that's seven percent now Okay, so 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 we have uh, people that came to our country because they were they they were the pull of the jobs and the push of the poverty from their countries. They're here now. They've contributed to our economy, and uh, through a legalization program, studies have shown it would be a great benefit to our economy to bring them out of the shadows. So I, I think you know that comprehensive immigration reform is the way to go. And again, every religious group in this country, major religious group, has endorsed it. And Senator Reiser, I know that your legislation uh, ultimately was not successful in the mm -hmm. state legislature, but as you can hear, people here are very concerned right. and, and seem to, to fall in line mm -hmm. with the very thing that you're trying to accomplish. Correct, and it is a, it is a federal law, the immigration, but on my, my, behalf, my behalf, if the federal government's not going to take action, I, I, I feel like the state is. And I feel like I speak on behalf, of, and it is an issue. I mean, in its very nature, illegal. That's a crime within itself. So, at that point in time, if somebody wants to change it, different. But that is the law of the land at the time. Okay, and Kathleen, I'll let you have the closing word here on helping us to to really wrap our arms around this very uh, huge, huge, important issue. Sure, well, and I, I want to talk to some of the things you said because I, I think what I have to say is that I think immigration is good for our our economy. That. Louisiana, we have, I think, 8,000 Asian-owned businesses here in Louisiana. We have over 7,000 Latino-owned businesses here in Louisiana, and they give about 40,000 jobs to Louisiana. I think that's a good thing. 
Um, I see employers in my practice almost every day. They walk in and, and they want to do it the right way. They can't do it the right way because our law doesn't give them a way that is economically responsive and responsive in a timely manner. They would love to do it the right way. And even more than that, they would love to have American workers. But they advertise and they advertise and they don't get Americans who apply for their jobs. And it's not because they're paying mi below minimum wage. They're offering good wages for these jobs. But the problem is the Americans don't apply or they come and then they leave after a few days. And it is, there is a need that can be filled through lawful immigration in our country that can help boost our economy. I'm going to have to let that be the very, very last word. Thank you all so thank very you. much. I want to thank our panelists, Attorney Kathleen Gasparian, Senator Neil Reiser, and Dr. Susan Weischer, and also our unbelievable audience. You all have been fantastic. We've learned so much. When we come back, we'll have a few closing comments. Well, comprehensive reform, mm -hmm. a very difficult uh, topic to deal with and perhaps one we can follow up a little bit online. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've had such a great discussion here tonight and there's just so much more that we weren't able to get to. This is certainly something that we're going to have to revisit. Well, well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Louisiana Public Square, but we encourage you to take this month's survey on immigration reform in Louisiana by visiting us at lpb.org slash public square. While you're there, click on the Be in the Audience link to be considered for a future program and take the citizenship test Shauna mentioned at the beginning of the show. We'd also love to get your feedback on tonight's topic. Post a comment like Val did following last month's show about charter schools. Val writes, like you, I am passionate about public education. Many very effective teachers burn out because of what seems to be constant changes in expectations. Well, thanks so much to all of you. Well, thank you, Val, for posting. We appreciate your comments. Now, in an unprecedented initiative, local, parish, and state law enforcement agencies have joined forces to take on the crime problem in Louisiana's capital city. And Monroe, Slidell, Alexandria, and Lafayette have been named among America's 100 most dangerous communities. Join us in November as we explore how Louisiana cities and citizens are confronting high crime rates on our next show, Combating Crime in Louisiana. Thanks so much for watching and have a terrific night, everybody. Good night, everyone. For a copy of this program, call 1-800-973-7246 or go online to www.lpb.org. Support for this program is provided by the men and women of the Louisiana Forestry Association. Through sustainable forestry, LFA members promote the health and productivity of Louisiana's forests for generations to come. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting.